Oh, I love the smell. And I can honestly say it's the best food I've ever had in Taiwan. Yeah, I love the color. Hello, my name is Morris. I'm 24 years old, and I've lived almost all my life in Taipei. Uh, four of those years, however, I studied abroad in the States. Um, I'm currently working in Taipei, and this time we're here in Jiayi, which I've been here once um, with my mom, and we went specifically to the uh, newly built Jiayi Museum. I'm really excited to bring my colleagues to the museum and show them around. I'm really excited, and I can't wait. Hello, I'm Arnaud. I come from France. I'm 28 years old and I have been in Taiwan for almost three years because I'm a journalist here. So I actually have a pretty strong connection with Chai because I already came here twice for shoots at work. I keep the memory of a city full of surprises and delicious food. And hopefully this time I hope I will be able to dig a little deeper. I'm very looking forward to you know, coming back to a trip with uh, my friends uh, Sam and Morris. Uh, I'm sure we will have a very good time there. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm from the UK and I've lived in Taiwan for over three years now. Uh, I'm usually based in Taipei uh, and I don't usually get to travel much, but um, recently I got the chance to travel with Arno and Morris and now we're out traveling again. Uh, and I've been to Dai before uh, and last time I mostly went to some historical sites uh, and ate a lot of food. Um, and this time, it looks like we're taking a more artistic approach, but also, once again, eating a lot. So I'm very excited to get to know a little bit more about the city. Jiayi City is a city located in the plains of southwestern Taiwan. The city has a long history and has developed over many centuries. East Market is a great place to find local delicacies. With all its breakfast options, it has earned the nickname of the Morning Kitchen of Jiayi. It is very early in the morning and we are in Jiayi City. Uh, I'm very hungry, I don't know about you two. I am too. I am too. So uh, we have found this market, Jiayi Dongmen Market, uh, and we're gonna head in and see what we can find and hopefully get some good breakfast. Oh yeah. Have you had this before? Hong Never. Tea? First no? time in my life. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. I like the egg yolk. Mm. It gives it, it's like creamy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Xinan Cha is how to do it. Xinan Cha is how to do it. And then, this is the same thing. What kind of people are from this place? They are 
哎，我来一份炒饭哦。好，多少钱？多啊？请你，请你，嗯，决定吗？真的，真的。我要一个童仔米糕，然后一个排骨酥汤。It looks really oily when they fry the pork, but the soup itself is actually really clean. Definitely a nice way to start the day during the winter. 啊 ，local just told me this place was very good, so I would like to try it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 这是 beef soup， like all different kinds of parts of the the cow。Look at it， still so smoking。哦。I think this this is one of my top three in this market。阿贝，你早上还会吃别的吗？还是也会吃别的？我们刚刚有看到有一个看起来很有名的那个炸肉卷。哦，很好吃，看起来很有名，很多人在排队啊。对啊。Funny thing about here is people are wearing helmets because they're just riding their bikes in. It's just you know first come first serve. 然后我看着 the wrap， and it's as big as my forearm. It's like thick and big. Two dollars for this big thing. Wow, this is a heavy breakfast, huh? Hmm. We're here in Jiayi, and we have some trips and activities planned, right? I came to hear about those two Frenchmen who have settled here in Jiayi for quite a long time, and so one of them is an artist. Okay. He used to restore like artworks in France, and there is also this French musician. Okay. Oh, okay. Who we are going to talk with? I uh, know is what he is doing for the local culture here. I want to show off uh, my extreme musical talent. So we are going to go to a, a factory that makes um, brass instruments. I also plan some art art related uh, activities for us. Uh, first of all, there's this uh, really nice Taiwanese tile museum. I saw some pictures online. It looks really pretty. The second one is one that I'm looking forward to. And I went to the Jiayi Art Museum about half a year ago. Uh, and it's newly built. It looks really pretty, both inside and out. Well, all this cultural stuff sounds great, and I'm very excited. Yes. But uh, I've also prepared what I think is the most important part of this trip, which is that we will be going to eat sago yu tou. Ooh, sago yu tou. How yes. do you translate that? Uh, fish head stew, and it is one of my favorite things to eat. I would just say I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious. We'll Keep see. an open mind. But before that, let's just finish our breakfast, yeah. and we can get on our way. Let's let's eat to get ready to eat later. <laughs> Enchanté, Christophe. Ravi de vous rencontrer. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wilson. Nice to meet you, Maurice. So, guys, as I told you, uh, Christophe has been living in Jai for nine years, mm -hmm. and he is like a multifaceted artist uh, with wow. a studio here and also doing some renovation art works here in Jai. So, Christophe, we are in the morning. The sun is rising, and we are in this lovely park. Uh, do you often come here? I used to come often with my kids, especially to play with them, but also it's a quite nice park in Jay. It's a, with a lot of diversity, different tree, different know how. But I think we can just take a walk. I can show you around. You will appreciate by yourself. That sounds good. Sure. Sounds good. Okay, let's go. But originally, my wife is from Jay, 
And uh, beginning when I come to live in Taiwan, I used to live in Taipei. This time we come often for Chinese New Year's and I appreciate in some way the slow tempo of the city mm -hmm. because it's a smaller city, people are not so much in a rush. The weather too because in the north is quite raining a lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, we know that too uh, well, yeah. too well, <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I will show you a place who is really interesting in uh, J Park, it's uh, called J18. It's uh, also the J Historical Museum. I think you will really enjoy this place. It's really an exceptional place in J. Uh, I made an exhibition about one and a half years ago. Yeah, welcome to J18. This is a traditional Japanese house. Here you can really feel the, feel the warmth of the, of the wood and also the tide, the, the architecture by itself. It's really, really beautiful. It's the feeling you have with the whole house. And uh, this is a feeling you can have also with Taiwanese house, all kind of wooden house. It's to help yourself to think about how to preserve the atmosphere of the warmth of the heart of the noble part of the wood. And this is in some way, yes, the similarity between all kinds of wooden hearts and we can inspire it for fixing the whole house too. So you mentioned you had an exhibition here once, right? Yeah, a couple of years ago. I met an exhibition, it was really interesting because I met also with a bamboo association, local one nearby Jay. And uh, in some way, we link the modern heart, contemporary heart, mm -hmm. with a whole traditional bamboo tradition of Taiwan, who is quite like in front. Many old things are lost like that. Yeah. And this association tried to preserve that. Okay. And uh, inside a Japanese house. And this is what was really interesting in some of this exhibition is a mix of culture mm. who come from the architecture of Japan, the tradition of Taiwan. Mm -hmm and my hard work as a French artist. This mix was kind of really interesting. Christophe, as an artist, you just told us that you want to be part of the community you live in. So tell us about those uh, paintings you made. I was invited by the director of community to paint a wall for the community. And uh, this was made in two parts. This first part, the idea I have since the beginning when I come here because a lot of vegetation especially the tree on the back and uh, I was thinking that it would be interesting to integrate the concrete the wall by himself to a vegetation on the back it was kind of a way to bring back to the nature what we built and when you were painting this because this is still a an alleyway with cars and motorbikes was yes, it hard of course, to uh, paint? <laughs> I go up and down of the chair. <laughs> this, was, yeah. this was kind of no choice. You paint on the street, you cannot stop people driving. You painted this as well, right? Yeah, there's a second part I do. But the style is really different from the other part. Mm, yeah, because on the back is not like the first part, there's no vegetation. And it's uh, mostly a building and no much light, like at the beginning of the entrance. And I want to bring more color in this part of the wall. So what was the community response when you were painting this? But it was interesting because I'm a foreigner and at first they were curious about what we are doing in a community. And slowly, especially people live nearby. They bring me tea, they bring me cookies. It was really friendly. And uh, this is how we meet some people become our friend too. So after the final result, they were satisfied too and, and do more some kind of decoration to integrate the, the wall to a community and satisfy people. There's a train coming. <laughs> oh, look. Hey, yeah, let's take a picture. Wait, stand. Stand still. 
Vibrant paint details have long been used to demonstrate the wealth of the owners of the building. James Xu, the owner of the museum, collected resources to purchase and renovate this building in 2015. This was after he and his team spent over two decades collecting more than 4,000 pieces of century-old patterned tile. Welcome to Taiwan Tile Museum. Well, you can see that this wall is made out of many tiles, right? The tiles are not new, they are all old buildings. They look new because they have been repaired. Because yes. like, Taiwan is not the only one that's making these tiles or yes. maybe reviving them. Yes. What's the main difference or what's so special? It's special for its combination with red oh, bricks. Just with the bricks? Yes, and uh, they have some fruit in it and animals. That uh, is Taiwan's unique tile culture. Does it symbolize anything? Yes, yeah, symbolize for harvest. Yes. Oh, harvest. Animals. And okay. rose means love. And I'm guessing these tiles used to be only for certain people, right? In the past, tiles are more expensive than land. So, oh, really? you know, the tile oh, is wow. very precious. Oh, wow. Yes. wow. Is it because it's um, done in a, by hand or is it done yes, like an intricate way? it's hand painting by master for wow. three hours. Three hours for just one of these? Yes, yes. Wow. Where do these tiles come from? How do you collect them? Oh, from all over the Taiwan. Which, from old buildings? If they are going to tear down, we go to rescue them, yes. So this building used to be? A timber shop. Oh yes. wow, okay. So the wood that we see around here, are yes. they left from that period? Yes, they from, that period. from that period, yes. This one is really intricate. It's a novel. Oh, it's a novel? <laughs> it's a novel. Oh, so it's like, it's yes. got a story. And is this part of the same story? Yes, same story. Oh, it's oh. like a kung fu story. <laughs> it's kind of like those Chinese calligraphy paintings, but on yes. ceramic <laughs> tile. Yes. Yeah. They are old, uh, old tile, and they are not modern. How old? About 100 years old. But I saw a tile over there that's a jin yen on it, yes, which is yes. like no smoking. It means no firework. Yes, oh, in the past, work. yes, it's uh, at the factory. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I see. Yes. But do people use it still nowadays? Yes, they yes, yes. Use Used in uh, maybe restaurants. To say no smoking. Yes, yeah. no smoking. <laughs> so funny. It's a timeless piece of <laughs> tile, yeah. <laughs> so how are we doing? How's coloring going? Mine actually symbolizes a lucky clover. Oh, it's okay. like a four-petal clover. Yes. So, are you feeling lucky? I hope I will be after I'm done with it. I think it represents, she said, like having a good and smooth career. So, I'm hoping that by during this, you'll get paid more. <laughs> <laughs> so, mine, I think it's a lily. It's kind of like a play on words so that everything goes well, like a good fortune. And I'm, I guess by drawing this, I'm, I'm hoping for that. Um, but currently, I feel like I'm in bad luck because this petal is really hard to color in. Do you see these lines? Yours is the most intricate design. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying really hard to color within the lines. It's just like, I know that uh, like a, a nine-year-old could do a better job <laughs> than me. Did you just feel like a kid again? I, I, I feel like an untalented kid. <laughs> like, <laughs>
Jiayi city is known as um, the city of paintings. We get this name from the 1930s. At the time, we have a lot of very famous painters, and then they also won very important um, government-funded prize in Jiayi. The museum is built upon the spirit, and then we hope to inherit the name, the glory, but also we hope to bring a um, new dynamic contemporary art into this museum and to show um, different exhibitions to audience. So I wanted to ask about this space here, because you've got these massive windows that look onto the courtyard. So why was it designed this way? The space that we are standing now is the very iconic space of the whole museum. So in here you can see the very high ceiling of three floors. Mm -hmm. So um, when the architect rebuilding the whole place, they recreate the triangle space. And then they applied um, very special wooden materials, glued um, laminated timber. So it can be really thin and long to stand up for um, three floor ceilings. So in here they built a very nice viewpoint. Mm -hmm. When they designed the place, they tried to build something lighter to make a contrast with the historic building there. So um, you have this very heavy historic building, but also you have a very light light box mm. in the middle of the whole place. So it will bring more interesting um, characters for the museum. Every year we have three exhibitions and um, two of the exhibitions we will focus on the theme of the local issues and also we will invite local artists to come and exhibit. But then one um, of those exhibitions during the year we will um, open up the possibilities so we will create a theme that is more about contemporary issues. You know it makes me single fan ever evolving work of art with like different uh, sunlight in the morning or in the evening. Mm. Then you have this non-permanent exhibition always evolving as well and you have people around going on you know with their daily activities. So it gives like a feeling of a place which is constantly changing, moving, and I find it very interesting, yeah. actually. Yeah, <laughs> because we are um, trying very hard to build a dynamic place and then to create a dialogue. It's about art in your daily life and how you engage with the place. I remember when I came here last year uh, with my mom, uh, there were so many people taking pictures yes. in this corner. Uh, yeah, yeah, with the round window and just the, yeah, it was hard to get down. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, many people say that this is the most beautiful space of this building. So in this building, you can see the combination of many different elements and characters. For example, that um, you have this different shape of window and this very high three floor windows. So um, when you walk inside, you can see light coming from different directions and you can actually have different feelings of the space. So as we know, Jiayi is a place full of arts and culture. So to learn a little bit more about the culture of Jiayi, we're here at a place that builds brass instruments. Cool. And I want to show off my amazing musical prowess to the both of you by playing this very large brass instrument. <laughs> That was really that's, good. That's already something, yeah. Whoa. Okay. Can you beat that? How do you do it? Okay. Just don't think about it. Don't think about it? Yeah. Okay. It's a feeling. <laughs> right. Just go with the flow, right? <laughs> <laughs> and in third place, we have okay. Mara's. 
<laughs> hey, how's it going, mate? Hi. Hi. So, who was the best so far? Of course, me. <laughs> so, it's my turn to. Okay. Please. You guys are very welcome to be my guest today. And my name is Wally. I have been working at the factory for more than 13 years. And so in this exhibition museum, like we've seen some mini trumpets, French horns, but I've been surprised not to see any saxophones. Yeah, and actually a uh, saxophone belongs to the woodwind instrument. But actually we only make brass wind instrument here. We also collect some historical brass instrument. For instance, uh, we have a natural trumpet here. It was made in 1840. And we also got a key bugles here. It's probably the first instrument with the keys, so we can make a tuning. Why does some of these brass, well, probably all of them are, why do they have to swirl? Some people say the circle shape. Yeah helps to make the sound a little bit warmer. Oh, okay. Smooth sounds. How long does it get for the instrument to get, sort of started to get rusty and... For the modern brass instrument, we tend to put a coating on the surface to prevent oh. it getting yeah. rusty. So, but in the old days, the old instrument, they don't have coatings. So the color start to change maybe every few months of use. Oh, just a few months? Yeah. So the, the parts that are still gold is because that, that's where they're touched, right? So where they're, tuss, where they're touched a lot, they're not rusted. So you can see like um, this part of the horn is, is gold, but the rest of it, which oh, isn't touched, is smart. <laughs> that's how metal works. We've, yes. all, we've all taken chemistry class, right? Yeah, in like eighth grade, maybe. <laughs> So now we're going to learn how to play these instruments. And to teach us, we have Carl Lee, who is the CEO of this factory. It's called uh, Mini Bugle. Mini Bugle. Mini Bugle. Yes. Oh, sounds like I'm back in the army, in the military. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And this is called Mini Pocket Trumpet. Mini Pocket Trumpet. So it kind of looks like a French horn. But yes, it's actually yeah. a type of trumpet. Yeah. It's... Wow. Nice. <laughs> this one. Yes. Looks yes. like a saxophone. So it's meant to look like a saxophone. Ah, yes. Right, right, right. You can shake your body. <laughs> <laughs> you can play it like a saxophone. Oh. Can we try it? Okay. Okay, you're gonna wake up the military. <laughs> what what message did you send to the to, to your army? Surrender. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So hello Chai. <laughs> Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Thank you. As soon as I heard we were going to Jai, I knew we had to go to Ling Chongming, Sagua Yutong. 
I can honestly say it's one of the best dishes I've eaten in my life and the best food I've ever had in Taiwan. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a bold statement. So they specialize in fish head stew. Okay. So they fry this fish head and put it in a stew and it's got a really great flavor to it. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm hungry. So now we have to decide what we want to order. And because we're here in Jiayu, we have a special Taiwanese Hokkien menu. So of course we have to get the fish head stew. Sago nice. hitao. It's actually on the menu. We all know that Jai is famous for its uh, turkey rice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rice, yeah, yeah. Turkey oh, yeah. rice. And how do we pronounce that? In Taiwanese, Okian. Hui Ge Ba Bong. I think we should also get the Dong Cai Xia Ren Dan Tang. Dang Cai He Lin Neng Teng. Dang Cai He Gen Neng Teng. Anyways, we're going to order that. Let's, Let's order. order. Let's go. What do you think of it? Mm. Mm. When you cook turkey rice, you preserve the oil that falls off the turkey, and then you serve that with the rice. It really brings out the flavor. Hello. Hi, Mi Ha. Thank you. 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 Thank because my name is Smart. Smart. <laughs> smart Lin. Yeah, yeah. Smart Lin. Thank you. Thank you. So how should we eat this? We don't eat the usual food. We 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 eat the usual food. So, so what's in the soup? Do the gu tao, and the ji the gu tao. And how how long does it take to make? About eleven. Eleven hours. Eleven hours. Like, did you invent this dish, or has it always been part of the local culture? This dao tai is actually my family, my home. So it's a family dish. It started out as just like a home cooked meal. Whoa. Whoa, which is a big piece. That juice is here, right? Sam is ready. <laughs> Kiss. 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 Again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you don't even need to chew it. <laughs> oh, the eye. Oh, the eye. The eye of the fish. I think I'm going to pass this time. Really? Uh, I can eat that, sure. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. It's like the outside is very crispy because it's been deep fried, right? But then the eye itself is quite soft. So you've got a really nice mixture of textures. So there's a, an egg in here and a shrimp, I think. So how should we eat it? Do we need to open the egg? Probably the dang wei sui. It's a smart egg. <laughs> so what do we eat first? Xia zi. Xia zi. Xia zi. Because this is put it in the So it has the smell of xia zi. Let's have a little bit of Okay, let me bring you to my friend's house. He's a whole Taiwanese house too, he's a musician. And you will meet Frank. A... Let's go for it. Hello. Hi. Bienvenue. Okay. Thank you very much.
So Frank, uh, Christophe just told us that you are an ethnomusicologist as well as a professional cellist. So I'm very curious, what is this place and why did you choose to settle here? As an anthropologist, I've been living uh, many years in Himalayas among farmers. And the first time I, I came to, to Jai, uh, you know, I was searching for a house and then I went to this temple and I, I, then I came to the marketplace here. And I saw immediately, you know, the, the few guys, old people, you know, selling few vegetables. And, and then I felt immediately comfortable because I, I had the impression that I was back to Kathmandu or, you know, uh, or to the village in Himalayas and where the people, are, farmers are also, you know, and then people here are especially kind. You know. I have very, very good relation with local people. Even I don't speak Thai, they welcome me in many ways, you know. I really enjoy this place and uh, that I will restore the place and then uh, and we will try to create a kind of dynamic for her local cultural activities here. This family uh, built, built this house almost 100 years ago, you know? And uh, so now she's 93, 94 years old. And she used to say, oh, you know, in this small room, my brother was to sleep there. And, uh, and she went to the kitchen and said, oh, yes, I remember we were using the firewood. Like it's through the generation, you know, it's, it's so nice to try to establish a kind of continuity. This place is to bring people to the music and the heart who don't get used to go to museum or musical hall. That's why he said he liked to play for the neighbor because many people, when he was performing here and do the music, was really the neighbor, the local people, and some maybe was the first time they are listening to classical music. And this is a really interesting thing that we this place is for all kind of people. So you renovated the space, right? Yeah, it's a house I renovated mostly alone and by myself. All, all the things you see are built by myself beside this furniture. <laughs> Everything is built wow. by myself. You know, Jai, uh, as opposed to Taipei, is a relatively older city, small, almost quaint town. Is that also why you uh, like here so much and decided to stay here? And in big city, many small houses disappear for the land. And in GIA, you have more opportunity to find a house in somewhere. And I was thinking, okay, I can use my skill to fix a whole broken house. It was more interesting for me in some way to use my skill to rebuild a whole house, including if it's not my house, because I will fear that this house in some way is rescued. It's the same purpose, the same idea that the roots I show you. For people, it looks like a garbage, it becomes a garbage. If a house, a whole house is broken, it just needs to be destroyed. But no, we can renew that. But like after almost or around nine years here, mm -hmm. like how much do you feel connected to this place? You know, when you travel, when you go to walk in a country, you always go back to this country generally at the same place. And every time I come, I fear I won't stay longer and longer and longer. 
And finally, I decided to come without walking by myself, you know what I mean, too. And then I decided to come to live here. <laughs> but always many little things bring me to Taiwan. You know? I made this choice and I never regret it. But always, uh, it's not, I'm happy in Taiwan. Uh, and I feel the peace of mind for painting, for walking. That's a beautiful conclusion. Thank you so much for showing us around Jai and letting us know a little bit more about the city. My pleasure. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. So much Cheers. to Jai. <laughs> Thanks for coming and discover this beautiful city. <laughs>Because I came to Jiayi before mm -hmm. once, and I actually uh, came to the museum specifically. Like, I, I came here for the museum. Really? And so, yeah, so I didn't do anything else. Um, so I didn't know how artistically rich Jiayi was. I was pleasantly surprised by the trip. You know, I mean, even though we were not given the opportunity to shine or to, <laughs> to show our many talents, I think <laughs> it, was still, it was still a very fun day. Humble experience. Yeah, a very humbling humble, experience. humbling experience. Yeah, my favorite part was eating and getting to meet the owner of the store, getting right. to meet Lin Songming. And now we have a photo with him. So the next time we go, we, he said we can show him that photo and then uh, we can cut the queue. Because you have to queue for like two hours. Yeah. And now next time we go, we can just be like, hi, I'm famous. Yeah. <laughs> hi. We live in Taipei, which is like very big, a uh, very hectic. big metropolis, you know, very hectic. And you know, sometimes, you know, you go to the countryside, it's very rural and it's, you know, very slow. But Jai has got like a nice, small city vibe. There's some arts, there's some local culture, there's some stuff going on. And I used to live in Kaohsiung, right? So uh, I can still recognize that people here are a little bit more uh, less fast-paced than in Taiwan, you know, and I like that. I want to buy a house here because it's probably way cheaper than Taipei. Oh, for sure. The, buy, the land is cheaper than the tiling, too. Oh, yeah, that's what they said. They said the tiles cost more than land. And now we've made the tiles, so we can sell the tiles and then buy, buy land in Jai. And we can get in restaurants for free, so why not move here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I found the story fascinating, you know, to meet a professional cello musician here in Jai who chose to settle here. Uh, Wow, I mean, that's, I love that kind of stories. And he has a very interesting profile, right, Frank, as he's also a researcher and he has spent many years in the Himalayas. Yeah, I was very moved, I must say, by the cello piece. I think it was very beautiful. But not only Frank, like Christophe also, I think is doing a great job here, you know, working for the local communities as a painter and doing some great, like, uh, street art and other, many other restoration works. and. Everything is doing, I think, is great. He has a lot of ideas to boost the local scene, which is already, I must say, like pretty impressive for Chai. But like he wants to take it to another level. Coming here and talking with them, like I can feel that they are also looking for some kind of somehow the same. They they are looking for the same, you know, connection, the same uh, environment, which is conducive to create hearts. And uh, so. In that instance, like I could recognize myself in what they were saying, yes. I like this like continuous creativity in every area we we discover. Like and I and I once again I like this idea of cross connections between different forms of creations. Try to push for new frontiers in art. That's what that's my takeaway from this uh, trip. Yeah. So also I think there are, there was this great connection between the three of us, like with Sam and Morris. Uh, who are my colleagues uh, and you know like it's it was good to be with them I sh we had like a very good time and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, talking with them like when we get back to work. Jai kind of reminds me of my hometown so I'm from Bristol uh, which is in the southwest of England and I feel like both cities kind of have a similar vibe actually so they're both smaller cities and have that kind of slower pace to them you know, people aren't rushing around as much, people are talking to each other more. More than that, um, uh, Bristol's always had this really like artistic vibe to me. You know, it's famous for graffiti, there's lots of street art everywhere. Um, and it seems like Jai has that as well, actually. So, you know, walking around, seeing the street art or seeing the tiles um, and kind of getting to see the artistic side of the city really reminded me of growing up. 
And also both my parents um, are musicians and they met in an orchestra. So coming here and listening to the music and talking about music and also going to the uh, brass instrument factory and kind of playing around with some instruments that we weren't as good at. Um, just brought back a lot of memories of growing up and it's been a really nice time to um, slow things down a little bit and kind of reconnect with art and be in an environment that is very new to me but also familiar in a lot of interesting ways. We spent the day and now the night in the city of paintings uh, as it's originally known in Jiayi and it really a lot of the little parts that we, we went through really reminded me of my uh, days as a theater actor. I think it really brings up something that me as uh, someone who used to more so aspire to be an artist kind of forgot as I moved out of college and as I kind of started to explore um, and live uh, in, in the city and just in, with life in general. And so it, I'm really thankful to be in Jiayi and uh, to be here experiencing all of these kind of stuff. And I really envy that kind of art form, you know, art that's blended with your daily life. I didn't know that art could do that. I wasn't really aware of that, but I think uh, I am more uh, aware of that um, after this trip.